I have a good woman I ain't good looking But I do some cooking I'm the old fat guy So use that oven If you want some loving Be like the old fat guy Like the old fat guy. Welcome to another edition of You Can Make It with the Old Fat Guy. I'm here with some pear cider that Bill brought for me. And say hello, Bill. Hello, hello. Today we're going to make something really good bratwurst. I love a good bratwurst, but I think it's a guy thing. She who must be obeyed just doesn't care for it as much as I do. But we're going to make up a big batch of it, and you can see how you can make it. Cheers! We're going to talk about the kind of casings you can use to put your bratwurst sausage in. There's two choices. There's natural hog casings, which these are, and there's collagen casings. Natural hog casings come packed in salt, so you can keep them in the fridge for a year to two years. The thing about them is they come all tangled up like this. This is a small package. You can get them in big hanks like this and you've got to untangle one of them out. Now once you've got it untangled out, it's critical that you rinse it really well in cold water. Put them in cold water, rush them up, fill them with cold water, and push it back and forth, and do all that the night before. Then let it soak in cold water overnight. And then, just before you're going to stuff it, take the cold water out and put some warm water in and you end up with a nice pliable hog casing. Here's the meat we're going to use to make our bratwurst. I'm going to use a mixture of pork shoulder, because it's got nice lots of fat in it. You want some fat in your bratwurst. And chicken thighs. They'll just take the bones out of but leave the skin and the fat on, because you want, again, some fat in your bratwurst. So we're going to start off by cutting the bones out of this pork. You're going to want, after the bones are out of the pork and the bones are out of the chicken, about three parts of pork to two parts of chicken by weight but we'll find that as we cut it and weigh it out. Okay, we have about 1,340 grams of pork cut up. That 1,341 is about three pounds, so we're gonna want about two pounds of chicken. Okay, you know what, I'm just cutting the bone out of the chicken, and I don't worry too much about getting all the meat off, because I'm gonna freeze these up, because they make great chicken stock. When I get enough bones and other pieces of chicken trimmings, I'm gonna make some chicken stock. So I did about 1,340 grams of pork, and I've got 865 grams of chicken. That's about three parts pork to two parts chicken, and I can figure out my seasonings to go with that. An important thing to know about making sausage is that you really want to keep the meat cold at all times. It gives you a better texture when you grind it, and it gives you a better textured sausage. So what I do is I'm going to be taking, this meat has been in the fridge until I cut it. Now I'm going to cover it and put it back outside because it's as cold as the fridge outside here in the Rockies. But you've got to keep it cold. I even have all my mixing bowls, my grinding equipment, and my stuffer outside to keep cold because it's important to keep the meat cold. So this is going outside. I've kept the meat cool and I've had the bowl and the grinder and all the attachments outside keeping cool. Now I just have to grind the meat. I'm using a medium dye grill uh, grinding plate which is about 3 16th of an inch and I'm just going to run the meat through it now so excuse me while we get noisy mm -hmm. if you don't have a power grinder like this you can use one of those old hand grinders like your mother used they work fine they're just really slow we have the meat all ground, it's back outside, staying cold, always keep it cold. And now we're going to put together the seasonings that will go in our bratwurst. And the seasonings are 30 milliliters or two tablespoons of kosher salt, seven milliliters or a teaspoon and a half of sugar, 10 milliliters or two teaspoons of coarse ground pepper, 
10 milliliters or two teaspoons of nutmeg, five milliliters or a teaspoon of marjoram, five milliliters of ginger or a teaspoon of ginger, and 10 milliliters or two teaspoons of mace. We're just going to mix those together prior to putting them into the meat. Okay, I've got uh, my about five pounds of chicken and pork on a tray so I can mix it. And I've got the seasonings I mixed together. And I'm going to sprinkle them over the meat mixture. And then I'm going to set a timer for four minutes and I'm going to mix this really thoroughly. It's critical you get a thorough mix so the seasonings are spread throughout. And when you're mixing it, just fold the edges in and press down. Fold the edges in and press down. Keep doing this for four minutes to make sure it's really well mixed. Five, four, and we're recording. Okay, I've been mixing this up for four minutes. My hands are nice and cold, but it looks well mixed. And what we're going to do is we're going to take two little pieces of this out to do what they call a fry test, just to make sure it's seasoned appropriately. And the reason for two pieces is Bill will want to try some too. That sounds good. So we'll take this now and guess what we're going to do? We're going to put it outside to keep cold. Time for our fry test. We've got a fry pan heated up here. We'll just press these out thin so they cook quickly and throw them in the fry pan. Make sure they cook through. We fried up our test fry and we'll just cut in the middle, make sure it's cooked all the way through, nice all the way through. And we'll just throw these on a plate and cut them up into bite-sized pieces. Turn off the heat and we'll have a taste of our taste test right after I pick up the spatula. Ah. Okay, Bill, want me to feed you? Oh sure, why not? Thank you. Mmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's a bratwurst. This is my LEM sausage stuffer. It'll take up to three pounds of meat, so I'll have to do a couple of batches. You can use your KitchenAid. It does have a sausage stuffer attachment, but it is worse than chewing tinfoil to try and stuff a bratwurst or any other sausage with the KitchenAid. So I bought this. It's a really great piece of equipment, and it makes it much easier. And what you do, is you start off by taking your casings out of the water try and squeeze as much of the water out as you take them out and then put them on the counter next to your stuffer now you're going to get the casings on the horn here which means you got to find the opening in the end and that can be a little fussy sometimes just get your finger and mess it around there's the hole there and then you want to take the hole and just start it over the horn and then as much as you can hold the casing straight and just keep pulling the casing onto the horn until it's all on. We have most of the casings on when you've got just a couple of inches left you want to tie a knot in the end because it's going to stop the sausage from squirting out the end if you do. Hopefully you're better at tying a knot than I am. There we go. Two knots? One knot? One knot's fine. Just need an overhand knot. And then slide it all the way up onto there. Now, I'm going to get the meat outside from chilling and put it in the hopper. I've taken the meat in from outside and I'm going to put about half of it into the hopper here. Remember, this is only a three pound stuffer, so you don't want to go over that. Even though it looks like it'll take more. There we go. And we put it in. We put our stuffer together and we start cranking this down. There it goes. You don't want to stuff it too full. Ah, and the kind wife's going to help with being a holding holder for the horn tray. We finished stuffing, so you just want to tie the last one off. And then we'll be ready to make links. I'm looking for six inch long links. So what you do is you measure out your link. There's six inches and you make a dimple. 
and a little bit of a blow out there so we'll be careful with this one just twist it by hand now then what you want to do is go down and make another mark at six in inches and a mark at the end of six inches and then just pinch that off and spin it starting away from you and then measure six inches and six inches away from you pinch that one off and spin it towards you eat bratwurst do you want for dinner three. uh um two. you think i could eat three i don't know You're two gonna... two seems much more likely okay two for you and one for me so when you uh cut them they don't fall apart no not if you twisted them enough Okay, we're going to start cooking the bratwurst just so we can taste them. And I started by firing my barbecue up, and all the grills tend to need to heat up for 10 minutes. So what I've done is I just put a cast iron fry pan on there with a tablespoon and a half of olive oil in it. We're going to let it heat up while the grill heats up. We're going to cook our bratwurst in the traditional way, which means poaching them in beer. So we're going to start off putting them in a saucepan, pour a beer over the top of them. I got a nice dark Modelo Negro now which I love, nice Mexican beer. And then we're going to want some onions afterwards. So we're just going to take about a half a cup of onions for the three bratwurst we're doing and put them in there. And then you want to put them over high heat until it comes to a boil. And then we're going to simmer them for another eight minutes. So you can see that the frying pan's heated up and smoke's coming off the oil, which is what we want. And we got the bratwurst. So we're going to take the bratwurst, and this is on a quite high grill because we want them to brown up, and we'll throw them on there. And then we're going to take the onions and put them in the fry pan. That was definitely hot. Oh yeah. Now the trick with the onions is you don't want them to blacken. You just want a bit of caramelization. And you'll see they'll get color quite quickly because we heated the pan up first. What you're looking for in your bratwurst is to just get a little bit of browning on it because you get that nice Maillard effect from the charring. And my buddy Bill likes his buns toasted so we're just going to throw a couple of buttered buns on the grill just for a second to toast them up for him. Well, a little more in a second. Well, we'll see. Well, Bill, here's our bratwurst. We'll give it a try. Oh, definitely. Okay. Mmm. Mm. Oh, wonderful. Really good. And you can make it. When dinner time gets here, and your wife has made it clear, it's your turn to cook my dear. You have no need to fear. Make the dinner feature spouse bring peace into your house. You can make it. If you're lucky, she will say. And life will be okay. Life will be okay. You can make it.